why would anyone in their right mind want to do 18 feet U-turn? Eighteen feet U-turn. Now, why would anyone in their right mind want to do eighteen feet U-turn? I have no idea. We've been all over this country traveling thousands and thousands of miles, and I have yet to see a public road that I had to make a U-turn on that was eighteen feet. Private roads, yes, eighteen, twelve, and lower, but never a public road. So why would you want to do an 18 feet U-turn? Well, here's why. First, you know that you are in control of your bike when you start doing 18 feet U-turns. Any police officer that's been to motor school know that everything they do is 18 feet. Secondly, you just got that pride that I can do it. And third, if I could do it on a big giant gold wing, it doesn't matter what you're riding, I know for sure you can get it. But the most important thing about doing an 18 feet U-turn is when you're out riding on a public road and you know the public roads are 24 feet and wider. When you're out riding on those public roads, you know you have the confidence and skill level to do a U-turn because it's larger than 18 feet. So what I'm going to do right now is show you how you get down to 18 feet and it's simple no cones needed parking spaces we all know the parking spaces are nine feet once in a while you get one that measured 10 or nine and a half but 99.9 percent of the parking spaces are actually nine feet so you do two parking spaces you got it you're at 18 so what we're going to do is do three parking spaces which is 27 feet and break it down little by little until we can get 18 feet and everything remains the same with your slow riding skills this is advanced stuff remember is friction zone stay in that friction zone steady throttle you always want power to the rear wheel you never want to kill the power and no kind of wheel on your bike do not put a clutch all the way in do not hit the brake hard and do not kill the power especially when you're making the turns because killing the power at slow speed will bring your bike down even if you're hitting your rear brake. So we're going to do this right now. We're going to start at 27 feet and break it down little by little. So those of you who already have 24 feet down, dialed in, practice with 27 feet, even though you have 24 feet dialed in. Practice at 27 feet and start breaking it down little by little inside of 18. So here we go. I am going to find a line and with the 27, I'm just going to go line to line. Okay, this line right here. Go over here. Look where I want to go. To this line. And I know I'm at 27 or less. One more time. 27 or less. Last time. 27 or less. And if you're one of the people that's really comfortable with doing that now, you go line, do the same line to the middle, just outside of 18 feet, maybe 24 feet. From here to the middle, steady throttle to the rear wheel, back on the line. Once again, to the middle. And what I'm doing is chopping it down little by little. So now I'm going to say, okay, I done 20, 24, I done, done 20. Now it's time to go chop it down. Now you want to do that until you get it. Line, and try to go line to line at 18. See, I can go line to line at 18. I'm not even inside the line yet. I'm just going line to line. Because remember, once you go inside of these lines, you are below 18. So as you do that more and more, now you want to start breaking it down a little bit more to come inside the line. And you'll be going 18 and sub 18. Much will as you 
much power as you can to that rear wheel. Now, sometimes you're going to want to bring the power. Hold on, let me get closer to the camera. Now, sometimes you're going to bring the power up a little high. I try to keep mine between 1100 and 1500 RPM. If you go all the way up to 2000, that's fine. You just don't want to stay up there the whole way because you might run your clutch depending on the type of bike you have. And if you, your bike overheating, let it rest. Get back started. So now we're going to do 18. Now we done broke it down. Let's say we were doing this for about a half hour and you broke it down a little bit and you're doing 18. The one thing you're going to do is have that muscle memory from 27 all the way down to 18. Now, contrary to popular belief, you don't have to scrape to do 18. You just have to know your bike lean angle. Once you know your bike lean angle, doing 18 will not be a problem as you continue to practice. So here we go, 18. Not scraping at all. One more time. Turn around. I'm going to drop it a little bit lower this time. One more time. I can't see my front wheel, but pause. Look where I want to go. Your turn. Remember, this is Vans riding. Pause. Look where I want to go. Matter of fact, let me come and do it with a dip. Without a pause. I'm going to roll into it. I'm going to come out here. Dip. I think I went over the line that time, but roll into it. Pause, drop it, and complete your 18 foot turn. Remember, everything's remained the same. Look where you want to go. Steady throttle. Little pressure on the rear brake. You don't want to put too much pressure because you're going to start bumping. Now, as you put rear pressure, you can put a lot of pressure on a rear brake, but you don't want to stab at it because you don't want the bike bumping, especially especially when you're into the lean because it's going to feel like the bike going to stop and you're going to do what comes natural. You want to take your foot off the pegs. That's something you never want to do. So if you like this video, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up and share with people. Go out there and practice. It's a good practice where you don't need any cones whatsoever. And if you're out riding, remember, ride long, ride hard, ride strong, and most importantly, ride safe. From Boots and Jeans Riders, I'm Rich, and I'm out. Peace. Now go get your 18s.